you and I thank you for tuning in with me this evening. My name is Elisa Jeffrey Hodges and I am coming to you today from a different angle. And so if this is your first time tuning in with me, I want to say welcome and God bless you. Okay, so, um, but everyone, I wanna thank you uh, for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to review or look over the, the videos here. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube video channel, please do so. I will greatly appreciate it. And so once again, I'm coming to you from a different angle. Okay. And so um, today we will be discussing chapter six, um, which is titled, It's a Personal Matter. It's a personal matter is the title of our lesson for today. All right. And so, uh, as I had just stated, it is chapter six. Once again, my name is Elisa Jeffrey Hodges. And so let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So, um, as you all know, if you've seen prior videos, I explain, uh, the story first, and then what we do is we're going to go right into the the podcast version of that where I give practical advice, okay? And then I want you guys to know that I just don't share advice with you all. We're in this thing together. I also, uh, you know, take my own advice. And so, uh, but once again, I thank you. So let's get started. Now, um, we're coming from the book of Jonah. One thing I will share with you is that today I will not be explaining the entire book of Jonah. When you have time, you go back and read the book on your own. But I will be coming to you if you have your book uh, on page 51. I will be discussing chapter 1 verses 1 through 17. And then we're going to jump over to chapter 3. And then I do believe it's verses 1 through 4. And so... Um, Let's go ahead and get started. So the Lord spoke to Jonah and he told Jonah to arise and go to that great city that's called Nineveh for the wickedness, for their wickedness has come up um, unto him. And so, you know, I want to pause right there because that's the type of God we serve. You know, it's like warning before destruction, okay? So he, he want Jonah to go to that great city of Nineveh because the wickedness of uh, their wickedness has come up to him, okay? And so now Jonah did what so many of us do. Jonah went the opposite direction. So instead of being obedient to the Lord, he decided to go uh, pay his fare, and, and board a, a, a ship, he got on a ship uh, that was headed to Tarshish, okay? And so now what happened was the Lord had caused a violent storm to arise. I mean, this storm was something that the sailors had never experienced before. It was powerful. It was violent. It was an attention getter, okay? And so now... The sailors were so afraid, what they did were they began to pray to their gods, okay? But they prayed all they want. Nothing ceased or stopped that storm from uh, occurring, okay? And so they even took the cargo and threw it overboard, trying to lighten the load, but that still did not help. And so the captain um, went down to the lower level of the ship and there was Jonah asleep. And so the captain said, get up. He told him to wake up. And he said to pray to your God that he may have mercy and save our lives. Okay. And so now back then what they did were they, um, the, the sailors, they cast lots um, you know, like dice, just picture like dice. And so when they rolled the dice, the dice will fall on the person who was responsible for this situation that was taking place, which was this violent storm. And so guess who the lots fell on? That's right. The lots fell on Jonah. Okay. So they began to question him. They was like, wait, who are you? Um, where are you from? What's your occupation? 
and what's your nationality? So of course, Jonah answered them, but then Jonah also shared with them that he was running from the Lord. So what happened was the sailors, the sailors, they got upset. They began to groan. You know how we do, but they got upset and I don't blame them. They don't threw all their cargo overboard and, and things of that nature. And so now uh, they asked Jonah, they said, Hey, what is it that we can do to cease this storm? And so Jonah said something that I, I wouldn't have, I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't have said this one. Jonah told them that they um, uh, can throw him into the sea, throw him overboard into the sea. And so what they did was they began to try to, 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 to fight against the storm by roaring even harder, but nothing they did helped. Okay. And so then what they did was because they did not want any problems. They didn't, they knew that. So they thought that if they throw, and it, you know, naturally you would, if you throw a, a man or if they threw Jonah into the sea, that he would drown and die. And they didn't want that. They didn't want no problems with almighty God. And so listen, this is the blessing in it. Remember before I told you that they were praying to their gods, they began to pray to almighty God. Okay. And so then what they ultimately end up doing was throwing Jonah into the sea. And so can y'all imagine, I know, I mean, and so now this is the thing. Um, the Bible tells us that the Lord had arranged a, a, a great fish a big fish. And, um, and so some people, I know when we used to, we all probably have heard that it was a whale, but it didn't say that it was a whale. It said it was, he had arranged a great fish. And so, um, the fish swallowed Jonah. That's just how big this fish was. And so now you got Jonah that is in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Okay. And so can y'all picture that? First of all, I want you guys to get the picture. Get the picture. Jonah is in the sea. And then all of a sudden here comes this fish and the fish swallows you. And now you're in this, the belly of this fish for three days. Can you guys imagine that? And so what happened was the, um, the fish on that third day, the fish, um, spit Jonah up. Okay. Three days and three nights. And so then after that, he spit Jonah up. Um, and so now the Lord came to Jonah again. And so the Lord said to Jonah, he said, let's try this again. Let's, let's try this a second time. He said, go to Nineveh and deliver the message of judgment I have given you to tell them. All right. So guess what Jonah did? Jonah obeyed this time, the Lord. And so Nineveh, that city was so big, it took three days to, to get through the city of Nineveh. That's just how big it was. But um, the Bible tells us that when Jonah entered on the first day, he began to deliver the message, okay? And, um, but you gotta, to read the story because, you know, Jonah, he didn't have the right attitude. Jonah did not, he, although he did what the Lord told him to do, his attitude wasn't right. But then some people might be thinking, well, why, why didn't he want to deliver that message to, um, um, to Nineveh? Well, the reason why was because the Assyrians, okay, the people of Nineveh, they were sworn enemies of Jonah's people or, or God's people, okay? Now, these were the type of people that the Assyrians were. The Assyrians were cruel. They were ruthless. Um, listen, this is some, one of the things that they would do. And I thought, I just want to give you a picture of what we was dealing with here. They would skin their enemies alive. And then they would take the skin and, and hang it on a wall 
so that the other enemies will see what they had done. So this is the type of people that uh, we were dealing with that. Um, and that's the reason, you know, J J Jonah, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. but the, the, the Assyrians, they were warriors and uh, they were known for fighting. Okay. And so now, um, and Jonah knew that the power of God's word. He knew the power of God's word. And Jonah knew that the Lord had love for all of creation. And Jonah did not want the people of Nineveh to experience um, God. Uh, he didn't want them to experience God's forgiveness. He didn't want them to be blessed, okay? And so, you know, even with us, we can probably relate. We probably at a time or two didn't want to see our enemies, which we shouldn't have no enemies now, but we, we didn't want to see our enemies uh, blessed either. And so that was the reason why, or that was just, just, just a little bit of why Jonah did not uh, want to go and deliver this message um, to um, the people of Nineveh. But one thing I want to point out to you and this is not in our lesson, but this here is powerful. When Jonah delivered that message, it said that the king, the king, he took off his robe and laid it aside and called for a fast. And I thought that was powerful, powerful. I said a king did that. And so now that is the story or part of the story of Jonah, okay? I want you to go and uh, and read the entire story or the book on your own, all right? And so now I'm just gonna give you just a, a few moments to go get yourself maybe something to drink, and then we're gonna get started with the podcast, the A Different Angle part, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if you have your book, go ahead and turn with me to page 57. Uh, this is the area here that deals with let's talk. And so this is the part where um, I give practical advice. And, and remember I said before, we are in this thing together. So I'm just not giving, I'm also receiving and learning as I'm sharing these things with you. So let's go ahead and get started. Now remember we're coming from chapter six. The title is, It's a Personal Matter. So let's go. What's the danger of hardening your heart? What is the danger of hardening your heart? heart. Okay, so we have two choices. We're either going to hear and obey, or we're going to harden and disobey. So what's the difference? What causes some to hear and respond, but causes others to harden and rebel? So what is rebellion? A person with a rebellious spirit is one who is resistant to authority, a, a leadership or someone that is an authority, a figure, okay? Someone who just always fight against. But then the Bible also says that rebellion is as a form of witchcraft, okay? So now let's look at um, some, some signs um, that a person may be dealing with a rebellious spirit. One is that that individual would rather give instructions than receive them. 
Okay, this is a person that is dealing with a rebellious spirit. Two, uh, the person with a rebellious spirit or a rebellious heart, if they receive instructions, rules, or guidelines, or any type of uh, uh, restrictions, this individual here would rather make up their own rules. And we know, we all know someone or some people like that. They want to do their own thing, okay, instead of what they've been instructed to do. Uh, but the Bible says a fool is wise in his own heart, okay, but a wise man listen to counsel. So let's look at another uh, thing that um, someone may be dealing with a rebellious spirit. Um, this person would feel the urge to do the opposite of what it is that they're being told or asked to do. And then finally, a person with a rebellious spirit enjoy going against and breaking the rules. All right. So let's look at a person who has a submissive personality. Um, now, this individual is opposite of rebellion. A person with a submissive um, spirit is someone who willingly, um, submit to leadership of someone that's in a, authority or leadership. Okay. And then this individual here, they have, uh, the, the, a servant mindset. A person with a submissive spirit, they have a servant mindset and they find peace uh, taking instructions or receiving instructions from those who are uh, in authority uh, leadership roles. So now when God speaks to us, it's not always going to be what we want to hear or what we would like to hear, but we still should be obedient. All right. So now we've all heard the phrase, it's not Burger King. We cannot have it our way. We cannot pick and choose what it is that we're going to obey and, 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 and choose, uh, of course, and disobey. Um, and so now, uh, do you think, I got three things I want to share with you here. Do you think that Abraham wanted to sacrifice his son, Isaac? Absolutely not. But Abraham was willing to be obedient. But God made a way of escape and he provided a ram in the bush. God wanted to make sure that he still was number one in Abraham's uh, heart, okay? And so then, do you think um, Moses wanted to go before Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh um, to let my people go? Mm -mm. Matter of fact, Moses made up so many reasons as to why he couldn't do so. The Lord got angry with Moses, but uh, God made a way. And so they were able to um, deliver the message, okay, and be obedient uh, to the Lord. And then listen to this one uh, real carefully. Do you think that Jesus wanted to die on the cross? Mm-mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Now, he knew his purpose. He knew why he had to do it. And yes, he was being willing and obedient to his father. And we should thank him every single day. Okay? But the flesh did not want to go through that crucifixion. The flesh did not want to go through that pain and that suffering. I mean, can you imagine a crown of thorns being pressed on your head? You've been beaten. You're unrecognizable. Blood is, I mean, your flesh is just torn to pieces. No, he, he did not want to go through that agony, but he knew why he had to do it. 
Okay. And so, and we thank you, Lord, for being obedient. All right. So I just wanted to share those things or give you those three examples that although it may not be something that we want to do, but we still have to be obedient when the Lord asks us to do something. All right. So now let's move on. Let's look at steps on how to surrender to God and let go. Steps on how to surrender to God and let go. One is that we have to, notice I'm saying we, we have to change our perspective on the way that we are, are thinking or the way that we think, okay? And we have to trust God. Two, give, we have to give God our plans, okay? And seek him for direction. Three, let go of things that we have no control over, okay? We have to free our minds. We have to free our, you know, free ourselves. And then lastly, we have to let go of the emotional attachment, okay? Um, the reason why, and I know it's, it's not easy, but the reason why is because just in case, things does not turn out the way that we expected them to, all right? The sting won't be as, as harsh. So now let's move on. What to do when we get a second chance? What to do when we get a second chance to get it right? One, we have to let go of the past. Okay, why? Because if we constantly dwell on the past, it will hinder us in the future. Two, we have to identify the lesson that the Lord is trying to show us so that we will not continue to do the same thing over and over again. Three, lose the negative attitude. Lose the negative attitude. Four, Accept responsibility for the current situation. Accept the responsibility for the part that we play in the matter, okay? And then uh, finally, focus on things that we can change. We need to focus on the things that we can change, okay? Now let's move on. Let's look at ways on how to not let someone else's, I don't know, become the downfall of where you are trying to go. I know that was a lot. I'm going to say it again. Let's look at ways on how to not let someone else's, I don't know, become the downfall of where you are trying to go. Okay. One, we have to stop hanging on to things that have hurt us. Two, we have to set goals and create new habits in our lives. Three, we have to focus on our task, okay, in life. And then four, don't feed into the negative energy. Don't feed into the negative drama. We're too busy. We ain't got time for that, right? Okay, and then five, we have to set boundaries. We have to set boundaries in our lives. And then finally, we have to surround ourselves with people who are like-minded, okay? For iron sharpens iron, all right? So now, in your book, uh, we have an area here that's called reflection. And so I'm going to go ahead and read this to you. Um, it's on page 58. It says, it's a personal matter. Sometimes we are reluctant to do the will of God. But God has a way of showing us who's really in control. 
He allowed Jonah to think he was getting away without following his instructions. But just when you think things have passed over, then here come chastisement. God will chasten you because he loves and care for you and because he knows what's best for you. Just like your earthly parents, when your heavenly father gives you instructions to do something, you must follow through and do it. God knows exactly what to do when he wants your attention. He is the potter and you are the clay. God is molding and shaping you to be the man or woman of God he has called you to be. So stop resisting and just surrender. You will not be disappointed, okay? And so our scripture comes from Job chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. Therefore, do not despise the chastening of the Almighty. All right, so I hope and pray that I shared something with you all today that encouraged you. And so I want each and every last one of you to be blessed. I want you to stop running and surrender to God. It'll be the best decision that you ever made. So thank you and God bless.